Welcome to the Rising Woman Leaders Podcast. We are a sisterhood of women stepping into courage, self-love, and feminine leadership. I'm your host, Meredith Rahm, and here I'll be sharing personal insights as well as interviews with inspiring leaders and entrepreneurs so you can create more daily magic in your life and also grow your business without losing sight of spiritual values as a rising woman leader. If you like this podcast, use our hashtag Rising Woman Leaders, follow me on Instagram at Meredith Rom, and sign up for email updates at risingwomanleaders.com. You'll receive all the new and inspiring content, including insights I only share on email. Now get cozy with a cup of tea, light a candle, and grab a journal to listen to this week's magical radio podcast. Hello everyone. Before we dive into today's episode of Mantra, Sound, and Motherhood, I wanted to share that our guest today, Noah Lani, does share a bit about the birth of her son. I find it to be an amazing story and I specifically asked her beforehand if she would be comfortable in sharing some of it with all of you. I want you to know that there are some graphic details with it, and I hope that you find it as empowering, insightful, and inspiring as I did when I first heard her tell the story to me. As always, I'd love to hear from you, so please write us a review on iTunes. I'd love to hear what you think of the episodes, and feel free to check out some of the free gifts and resources I have on my new personal website, meredithrom.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon, and I hope you enjoy today's show. Welcome back to the Rising Woman Leaders podcast. I am so glad to have Noah Lani Love here today. Noah Lani and I first met in Hawaii, where our mutual friend Erica Jago, who I also interviewed on this podcast, she we led a workshop together at a yoga studio where Noah Lani used to have and. Um, Then later we got to be in a retreat together and really get to know each other a little more where I got to hear her music, hear her experiences as a mother. So a little bit about Noelani. She is um, a mother, a designer, and a yogini. She believes in the healing power of our intentions along with the gifts of this earth. She reminds us we all have the potential to teach, to heal, and to empower others through our offerings as we navigate our way to fulfill our true purpose of love. Noelani is also a doula, a beautiful mantra singer, a birth educator, and a dear friend who joined me in the Bali retreat last May um, for the first Rising Woman Leaders retreat. So glad to hear, have you here, Noelani. Thank you, Meredith. It's great to be here on your podcast with you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I'm excited to dive in and to talk to you about singing and your new mantra album, but also the different facets of your passions. You have um, this passion for birth and and you've been a mother and I'm just so curious about all of that and also how singing kind of ties it all together and can be of support to other mothers in their lives and other women who want to find their voice. But before we dive into all that, I just would love to hear a little bit of your background and how you came to do the work that you're doing today. Mm. <laughs> it feels like there's, I could write 10 books on that. Um, so I grew up in North Carolina. My mother is Hawaiian Chinese and my father is a good old Southern gentleman. And, um, Growing up, I was always an artist. I always loved creating things. And so in college, I started designing jewelry just for fun as a hobby. And I began my business straight out of college and followed my lifelong dream of moving to Hawaii to get back in touch with my ancestral roots and my Hawaiian culture. So I've been out in Hawaii for almost 11 years now. And... um, I've been designing jewelry. I use healing crystals and gemstones and love working with the healing properties of these gifts from the earth. And um, I got pregnant shortly after I moved out to Hawaii. There's lots of cute brown boys around here that are easily (laughs) distracting the women. (laughs) And um, 
And I didn't grow up, you know, with a um, very necessarily like holistic or naturopathic upbringing. We were healthy, you know, we were eating pretty healthy food growing up and we were very athletic, but um, I started leading a more holistic lifestyle when I came out to Hawaii and um, decided to have a home birth with my son, even though I'd never heard of a home birth or anything. And um, it was an amazing experience for me, very empowering. And um, from that experience and doing yoga, I decided to become a prenatal yoga teacher so that I could help women um, with their own process of birthing their child in their own empowered way. And so I decided to also become a doula and um, have also opened up my very own retail boutique and yoga studio. We don't offer daily yoga but we offer occasional workshops and um, my jewelry is the main feature there where women come from around the world and we bless them with their special crystals. It's almost like the crystals are kind of calling out to people like we need you and you need us to heal and to do the work that, that we're all meant to do here right now. So, um, and then singing, that also just came with me finding my voice. I've always loved to sing to myself or in my car or in the shower. Um, and finding my voice has just happened in the last few year, years as far as singing in public and um, speaking in public. So there's a lot happening with that right now in my life that I'm happy to share more about if you have specific questions. But that's kind of a little shortened version of how I'm doing what I'm doing right now. <laughs> mm, beautiful. And what I notice in what you're sharing is that you have all these different passions and it sounds like in different times of your life, like a new thing would come to the surface and be like, okay, I'm going to put my energy here and I'm going to put my energy here. And how has it been for you, like navigating different interests? And I know a lot of people listening also have other, many passions and I myself have had many passions and how do you navigate like where to put your focus and energy and and how has it been just navigating like so many different passions that is a great question and daily I'm like where do I put my energy right now um because there is so much and you know I think it's really honestly, just like you said, like, what am I most passionate about right now? What brings me joy? What excites me right now in this moment? Do I need to go and jump in the ocean and just enjoy that? Um, do I need to sing some songs? Do I need to write some songs? Um, and, you know, a lot of women actually ask me this question and they say, wow, well, you have a lot of talents. And I say, well, I, I believe that we all have a lot of talents and only when we allow ourselves to access those and, you know, practice those, um, are we able to find those? So, um, and then the other part of that is, you know, how do I, how do I navigate? It's really about having great support. Um, I have a wonderful team of women that, work with me in my company. Um, I have a staff of six women and they're all so amazing. They all bring such different facets to my business and they have their own ideas and their own um, jobs within the company that, you know, I couldn't do all of what I do all by myself. And they're, they're seeing the bigger picture as well, where we're all being empowered and we're sharing our gifts with the world. So, um, not only do I have that wonderful support at my work at my shop, but I also have my wonderful partner, Dusty, who is more of the stay at home dad. So I'm the business woman. Um, so that's been great. And then of course, community, like all of my wonderful friends who I get to have fun with bounce ideas off of and learn with and grow with. So I think that's, that's a big, um, kind of like a luxury that we have in Hawaii. The community is is your family. Um, it's like a village, kind of. So mm -hmm. it's really nice in that way. Yeah. yeah. I think that's so key, always having support in, like, those different layers. So you have your family, the people closest to you, your friends, and then beyond that, it's, like, 
business support or just personal support or you know, all of it together creates what can be like the a company that has had as much reach as yours so that's really cool to hear and yeah. I'm curious if so entrepreneurship I'm curious about like if that did you when you think of yourself when you were growing up did you think this is what your life would look like or, or did it was it just kind of one step in front of the other and suddenly here you are what's that like for you yeah completely um no when I was a child you know I I knew I wanted to live in Hawaii and that was about it I knew I didn't want to be like covered up in the winter time really cold and pasty looking (laughs) and that my heart just like thrived when I was in tropical weather in Hawaii and near the ocean. So that's pretty much the only piece of what's happening right now that I envisioned as a child. Um, I did think I wanted to be my own boss, but I didn't really know how that looked. And so, yeah, it's just been putting one foot in front of the other. Like you said, you know, I majored in Spanish and art in college. Um, so I didn't, you know, take jewelry design classes or anything. I was just self-taught. I never took any kind of economics, marketing, advertising, or business course ever in my entire life, Um, which is funny to me that I've had a business for 10 years now, almost 11. It'll be 11 years on Monday, August the 1st, that I've had Noelani Designs. Um, So... You know, it's it's really, like, so cliche, but just following my heart. Like, what feels right and um, what feels good right now and how can I continue to learn, continue to grow, and feel happy with everything that I'm doing? It's mm. the best way to guide yourself. And I want to go back a little bit because you mentioned so much in the beginning And one of them was around this idea of home birth and becoming pregnant and being like, okay, I don't know what to do. And I know, I remember you telling me that someone like specifically told you about it. Like, have you ever considered? And you didn't even know that was a possibility. So I wonder if you could tell us about how you first heard about it and what your first reactions were and how you ended up making that decision. Right. Yeah. I love telling this story because... I um, I had no idea that people gave birth at home, that people even had babies at home, or I'd never heard of a water birth. And um, when I was pregnant with my son, I was about four months pregnant, and um, I had found out like a month prior. And I was living at Waimea Bay on the north shore of Oahu, and my next-door neighbor, this amazing photographer named Red Mahan, was my next-door neighbor. And he was asking me where I was going to give birth. And I, you know, just said, I don't know, the hospital? I was 23 at the time and just really surprised that I was pregnant, didn't really know what to do. And he, he simply asked... Um, have you ever considered a home birth or a water birth? And I just looked at him like he was crazy. Like, what are you talking about? And um, I was like, I people do that? That's crazy. What is that? And he said, well, just do some research. I think you might be interested. So I started Googling and ended up finding the movie The Business of Being Born by Ricky Lake, a great documentary if you haven't watched it. Um, And that just settled my decision. I was like, yeah, I want to have a home birth. That sounds great. And this is what my body's meant to do. I'm a woman. I've got hips and breasts and these organs that are made to birth babies. It's like my body is designed to do this. Why why wouldn't I be able to do it in a comfortable setting like my ancestors did for thousands of years? And... um, so I, I decided to have a home birth and, um, I got a lot of opposition from my family. Even my partner, um, was not excited about that. I'm not, I'm not with him anymore. He wasn't very supportive of that, but he did support me in the end. And we went to some Bradley birthing classes, which really helped us in the process. And 
of educating ourselves. And honestly, I'd say the best decision I've ever made in my life and the most empowering experience of pushing a baby human out of my vagina in my home, (laughs) all natural, just like, oh my God, I am a woman, hear me roar. I can do this like what's next and like wanted to do it 10 million more times as soon as he came out just like I got this yeah (laughs) (sighs) and I imagine in the actual process there was probably a lot of doubt and things like oh my god why did I do this but I totally (laughs) wow wow yeah so yeah there was definitely And, you know, right before he came out, I'm thinking, what did I, why am I doing this? Who made me do this? And then that's called the transition period. And then it, it, it goes by pretty quickly. And that's like the last little push where you're like, your, your mind starts to doubt, but it's this like out of body experience if you allow it to be. And then I really think birth can be orgasmic. I didn't have an orgasm, but I'm starting to like learn more about this orgasmic birthing experience and for my next one I'm I'm like all about it (laughs) (laughs) wow can you tell us just a little more what you're learning about that yeah um I'm learning that that orgasm is supposed to be the natural experience in labor and it's supposed to be extremely pleasure filled which makes sense it's the same organs it's the same area of our body you know and birth is it's truly ecstatic like you're birthing this little human out of you you've just grown this amazing soul inside your body and you're releasing it out out into the world why have we been told and conditioned for so long that it's supposed to be this painful terrible experience and that we can't handle it when in fact that's exactly what our bodies as humans are designed for but what i am realizing and in in the doula work that i do is that it's really challenging for women to get into that experience of orgasm when you are surrounded by tons of people like i can't have an orgasm in my bedroom with my partner if they were like and people standing around me would be pretty challenging. So this idea of, you know, birth is safer at the hospital, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, and actually, it's not been, it's actually been proven that it's the opposite, statistically. So, um, you know, it's, I compare it to like taking a poo in a public bathroom, is taking a poo in your comfortable home private bathroom like in your home you know you can make whatever sounds you need to you can get into whatever positions you need to you're not worrying about like what other people are hearing or their noises or their smells it's like your own experience and like but the poo that's coming out in childbirth is a lot bigger so you've really got to like really relax and really open up and um, I mean, I could talk about birth for days. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, how many people were at your birth? And did you have midwife or a doula or any of that at that time? Yeah, I had one midwife and her assistant and my ex-husband. Well, he was my husband at the time. So it was just the four of us. Um, the midwife and her assistant actually didn't come until the last hour and a half of the birth of the labor experience because I I told them you know I'm not ready I'm 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 fine I'm doing really well by myself because I was able to just like feel whatever my body needed to experience and like make the sounds and move into whatever positions I felt were comfortable and then finally when contractions started to be like one to two minutes apart and lasting a really long time we called my midwife and said okay it's time to come over like baby's coming so yeah. um, and by that point I was kind of already in this like out of body experience where like my eyes were closed my I was fully naked like nothing mattered in this material world anymore anyway mm. so they were just like there to support and make sure that you know she caught the baby my son and um and it was beautiful it was just so beautiful mm. I've heard that it's it can be like a total trance like you just go into your own world 
What, was that your experience? Yeah, I specifically remember a moment after my midwife had come and, and I'd been in one position on the ground for a while on my hands and knees. And when she showed up, she asked my ex, she said, how long has Noe been in this position? And he's like, I don't know, a couple hours maybe. And she's like, oh, she's stalling. Let's get her onto the toilet. And I thought that was weird, but that's where most, a lot of women are very comfortable in the bathroom during labor because when you sit on the toilet, what do you do? You let go. (laughs) You let go. Like Everything comes out. Your body naturally is like, okay, relax everything in your pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, and plus gravity, you know, gravity goes up and, you know, or gravity is pulling us down. So gravity was in my favor in that position. And so as soon as I got on the toilet, I just went into this like outer body experience. Like I was not even there. My body was not here. And I kind of remember like floating above my body and watching everything from above in like this ethereal space. Like, whoa, this is really happening. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a spiritual experience having that mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm also thinking about I think in our society we have such aversion to pain and this idea of pain and even like sometimes now I try to tell myself if I'm experiencing something that I would usually call pain like a headache or a muscle tightness or something to just try and like remove that label almost and be like okay this is sensation and there might be intensity here but can I just like fully be with all the sensation and allow it almost to overtake me and to not be in that resistance I imagine that that was would really help in a birth yeah I love I love that um what you just said that's exactly what I share in my birthing classes is I don't like to use the word pain I just say you know there are sensations these what the western world calls contractions in the body like I call them sensations because when you think of contraction you think of something getting smaller and closing when we really want to imagine expansion happening in the cervix so that the uterus can be fully prepared or so the cervix can be fully prepared and open for the baby to move out of the uterus into the canal and then out of the body so um, finding that that shift of just what you said your thought transferring that idea of pain into a sensation Mm-hmm. When when women are having these contractions or sensations or these rushes of energy, you know, that can be intense, but how can you kind of channel that energy into some other label rather than pain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And I love to hear just like if you could imagine going back to that moment, like what was it like when you saw your son for the first time? Got to hold mm. him. Yeah, I was just pure bliss. I mean, I pushed him out, and my midwife. I was on a birthing stool at that point. I, my ex had moved me over to a birthing stool, and then my midwife was under me, and he just like she passed him right up to me in between my legs, and I held him in my arms, and I just held him up to my body right away. I was fully naked at that point, like I said, and just held him up to my body, just feeling so grateful and so proud and amazed and in love with this little human that I finally got to connect with and just held him up to my body. At that point, I didn't know if he was a boy or a girl. We we never um, found out his sex. I only had one ultrasound in the very beginning. And um, we just decided to be surprised. And so then I held him out. And I looked down, I was like, it's a boy. And as soon as I held him away from my body, he made his first sound like, meh. (laughs) And then I just went back to my body like, oh, he's, he's, they're still like wanting to be in that womb-like experience as they, as soon as they first come out, because that's all they've known is being curled up in a little ball with warmth and the heartbeat and your 
blood sounds moving through your body and the gurgling of your digestive system and your breath. So all of that, they just want to be right up next to you. But it was pure, pure love what I felt. And I mean, the hormones that are that are activated in your body as soon as you give birth naturally the oxytocin is just running through your body and that's the same um, hormone as when you have an orgasm is the oxytocin so there again it's like that connection between orgasm and birth and the hormones so Uh, yeah so beautiful and (laughs) I, I would love to hear just when you reflect back on this experience and leading up to it, how do you think that the experience of birth has affected you in your life? Like how I imagine there are just like the courage and the strength of going through an experience like that. How has it affected you in how you approach the, your life since then? Mm, immensely, immensely. Just becoming a mother is truly a rite of passage. Like, when you become a mother, you just realize how important life is, how important um, your own life is, and how much responsibility all of a sudden you're given to keep this other human alive. Like not only yourself, but you're you're a hundred percent responsible for keeping this other human alive. Um, and so that not only shapes like your, you know, the, the microcosm of like, okay, I have to keep this human alive, but the getting to like this broader perspective of the macrocosm, like, oh my gosh, the world needs to change so that this human can survive on this planet. And so that, you know, my child's children can survive on this planet. So just like this, this grander perspective of why I'm here and why it's important to do the work that I do became so much more relevant and um, more powerful to me, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And, Uh, and honestly, it it was a huge challenge, like becoming a mother. It was just like at such a young age for me, like I was 24 when I did give birth to my son and like, I wasn't necessarily emotionally, um, prepared for that amount of responsibility so I did experience like extreme postpartum depression um and also I wasn't in a great space with my relationship so that was a large part of that postpartum depression um and I didn't eat my placenta which I would highly recommend to anyone who has a baby to eat the placenta because that helps to regulate the hormones after um but that was that was a big challenge for me but i you know, through every challenge comes, hopefully, the silver lining of like, okay, I overcame that challenge. Like, that was really tough. So now I can continue on and I'm that much stronger because I did what I did. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah. And, and what you mentioned before of just like this, the responsibility and having a grander perspective, having like a deeper why for why our world needs to become a better place, why we need to be doing the work we're doing. It's like, oh my God, it's not just about me anymore. It's like this little precious being who needs me. Um, it reminds me, I was just watching michelle obama's speech like yesterday i watched it twice it was so powerful for me because she talks about um her children and this idea of like we need a better country because we're like we're here for our children and we need to be these role models for them and yeah that it's like that idea of like when you really connect to the why and the inspiration behind that Mm -hmm. that was a great speech i i really enjoyed that I, I loved what she said about living in a house built by slaves and now her two little black girls are playing in the yard and yeah. they're educated and they're well, you know, like that was, that's huge. Yeah. So it's, it's already happening. The world is changing, you know, as women, especially, I think that I know that we have a lot of work to do and, And that leads into me, like, finding my voice. I feel like that was the biggest um, 
that's a thing for me and becoming a mother is wow okay all of a sudden I have this child to take care of I need to speak up for what is right for myself and my child now because I don't agree with what society has conditioned me to believe about what I should or shouldn't do for the well-being of myself and my child and so that that really helped to stimulate me activating my throat chakra and finding better ways to express myself and speak my truth and um I do believe that singing has helped tremendously in that um in that aspect of my life Mm. and what was your relationship to your voice growing up and when did it shift for you around like okay I'm yeah like I you started what helped you find more comfort in it um yeah growing up my mom loves to tell the story of how when I was in preschool and the teacher would do the roll call and I wouldn't answer I wouldn't say anything I wouldn't even raise my hand and my friends would have to say she's here when my name was called (laughs) and um I really just didn't like to talk at all I felt like there was no reason to talk like what do I have to say that anybody's going to care about um and so that was kind of my whole like mo for a long time I was I was I had friends, but I didn't like to talk in public. I didn't like to, like, be the leader necessarily. Um, And then in high school, I kind of, like, started to blossom. Um, I dabbled in a lot of drugs and alcohol. And I think, honestly, that, like, rebellious stage of my life helped to activate this, like, freedom within me. Um, And that progressed into college. And then I just quit drugs and alcohol, alcohol altogether and as I became a mom, I was like, I don't have time for that anymore. I don't have time to be hung over or anything. <laughs> um, and so um, that, that, was, that was like my kind of rebellious stage helped to activate that freedom of, of me finding who I was. And then becoming a mom just was like, okay, now it's time to figure out what, what I need for myself and for my child. And I'm going to start to ask for it. I mean... I talk to my friends who are new moms these days and if you're if you're a stay-at-home mom or partner if you ha- if you have a partner is at work all day it's kind of like you're in single mom mode all day every day by yourself just trying to take care of yourself and your baby you don't have time to like brush your hair brush your teeth you're lucky if you get a shower in you have to take the baby to the bathroom with you so like anytime I'd be out in public you know and somebody would be around I'd be like hey can you help me put this stuff in my car I don't care if it's stranger whatever just like I need enough I need like five hands extra hands here (laughs) so that was kind of like my my navigational tool of like finding my voice and then also with my jewelry like reaching out to people and saying hey I think you'd look really beautiful in this piece of jewelry I designed would you like to try it on and just starting to connect with women in a way that I never had before in a way of like offering the gifts that I had created or sharing my talent with people and that was a big um that was a big step in my um connection to people and sharing of my medicine that I have to offer to the world Mm. yeah so you were you were both giving and learning how to make strong requests and to ask for things that you needed because suddenly like you did you really needed the support and having that other little being in your life you needed to be there for them yeah (laughs) and how did the singing piece come in um so singing was something that I've always done since I was a child. My brother, who's older, and my younger sister and I always loved to sing at our house, um, just as kids, like, growing up. And then singing in public was not something that I enjoyed doing, except for after I um, after I had my son, I started taking ukulele lessons. And my teacher was this 14-year-old woman or 14-year-old girl, I guess, um, Emily Abrigo, she and her two siblings have a band together. So she was 14, 
and I was 28 at the time, and she was teaching me how to play the ukulele, and she has this beautiful voice. She can sing falsetto, and she would make me learn the chords, strum the chords, and sing the song at the same time, which, like, in the beginning was so hard for me to do, to coordinate left hand, like, fingering the chords, right hand strumming, and then vocalizing at the same time. It was like, wow, this is a lot to coordinate. Um, but I would copy her voice. And so um, I feel like it was also vocal training for me. And um, so that was about five or five years ago, I'd say now that I started doing that. And um, then I started to teach yoga and I started singing these mantras in my yoga classes with my ukulele and um, starting to activate other people's voices you know, asking them to sing along with the mantra. And I was realizing how much I enjoyed sharing in these small settings and how much it was affecting my students and their, like, voice activation. And not only, like, the the beautiful, like, singing together and hearing everyone, but just, like, bringing people together in song is such a special thing that we don't do a lot in our society, I feel like. And it brought such joy and happiness into all of our lives, not only mine, but my students, just as we're singing together, we all sound so beautiful. And, um, and so it started to resonate with me like, oh my gosh, this is something that needs to happen more in, in our lives is this singing together. So I started to offer mantra and kirtan workshops and um, now doing song circles and full and new moon women's circles as well, where we join in song. And it's just, it's a beautiful experience to, to witness. Yes. And I relate to you so much just in this story of like coming into the voice and using mantras in particular to start to strengthen and to be in that devotional process of like, okay, even though it might not sound perfect right now, I'm just going to do this and know that one day it'll be stronger. And even like the bigger reason for doing it not being about like sounding beautiful but actually just like being in devotion and having mm. uh the experience with the class and through that then like growing stronger uh i've met so many women over the years as i've started to sing more who are coming out and saying like wow i, I also have you know something feeling blocked in my throat chakra and um, I wonder, is, have you found that as well, like other women that are coming to you? And, and how do you approach them? How do you support them in opening their voice? Yeah, great question. Um, I do have a lot of women that are sharing that. And sometimes it's even hard to get people to sing with, with me. You know, I'm sure you probably experienced that as well. Like, you know, when you come into a mantra and you guide everyone into joining you and people are singing at a really low volume and you kind of guide them like sing with your heart or like open up your mouth. And, um, and it's really, like you said, like there's a lot of stuff that's like, that's blocking us from opening up our throat chakra. There's, it's really hard for people to speak their truth. And, um, and I do feel like, just like you said, it takes practice and not necessarily like thinking about having to have like the most perfect voice that's in tune, but just being in devotion and, and feeling the residence of your own vibration. Like when you hum or when you make sounds that are in devotion, it's beautiful no matter if it's off key or on key. It's just you're creating these vibrations within your own body and I visualize it as like, and I even say this, I'll guide the students into like visualize every cell of your body vibrating in harmony with every other cell, like all these beautifully aligned cells just happily vibrating and like vibrating in perfect health. And we can do that with our own voice, with our own mind like activate that sense of resonance that is healing our own physical emotional mental body that is so it's so powerful like just thinking about um 
you know, how quiet, how, how easy it is to just be quiet versus making sound. But when you come into this sound, it's like, oh, the whole body just loves it when you can realize that it can feel good and it can be pleasure filled. And like, this is kind of leading back into the orgasm and like the work that I'm kind of like starting to just dive into is like, how can we start to make more pleasure filled sounds? Whether <laughs> like, you know, like think about it, how blocked we are. Like if I was at the post office in line and I just started to make like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Like, just deep, resonant breaths that feel really good. Like, how many people would look at me like, I'm fucking crazy. Or, like, what is this girl doing? Why is she making such good sounds over there? Like, why is that so bad? Wow. And I'm starting to just, like, realize this. Like, wait a minute. This is the key to everything is we need to just be like, oh, Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to fake it at first like if it's if you're like if you're pissed and you just need to like oh but then try to turn that uh into oh and see how like quickly it can shift into this like experience of bliss and happiness oh. Oh, okay <laughs> i'm gonna try it i'm gonna try it oh. <laughs> It yeah. feels great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm imagining a new workshop right now. Uh, tap into <laughs> your pleasure through sound with Noah Lani Love. <laughs> yes, I'm just like yes. imagining a room full of women practicing <laughs> these sounds. <laughs> yes, yes. And this is like this has only come to me in like the last month where I was at Spirit Weavers gathering in the redwoods um it's a gathering of like 600 women camping in the redwoods for five days women only taking all kinds of workshops skill sharing um and i was having a conversation with this woman who had gone to a b workshop and i had um just been in the woods by myself, just listening and hearing nature. And it came to me like, oh my gosh, this is what needs to happen more is women need to be making these sounds. And I talked to my friend who had just been to the bee workshop and I go, what if all the women on the planet at the same time on one day, just all dropped everything they did and just like got into ecstatic sound, just (laughs) Oh, oh, every single woman, like what would happen? And then the men would maybe hopefully gather in and start to do it as well. Like, I think that that loving sound of like all of this vibration would literally like transport us to the next dimension. Like the earth would be healed automatically and like next dimension. (laughs) like everything would be fine it's all just loving vibration Mm, yeah Yeah. and I can imagine just being in this sound and you starting to open up in the singing like that opens up so many doors and just using your voice everywhere and really like you like you said before just making the request doing saying what you think and going out there and being less um, inhibited around that um, I'm actually taking a, an improv class right now, which was like super scary for me when I first started. But just like learning to make noises and get it out and just like <laughs> to take away some of those layers of um, guards that we sometimes put up around our voice. <laughs> yeah, because who said? Who said who said? I mean, we're always like, well, we're not supposed to do this or we're supposed to to do this. But who said and who said that whoever said that has to be that way? (laughs) That's what I'm doing a lot of lately is just all this questioning, like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Why is it like this? Um, It's so funny that you said that, like, you know, you're envisioning this workshop of me like bringing people into these pleasure filled sounds. Cause just the other day I was having a 
uh, we had our monthly employee staff meeting at my boutique and we always open up with some yoga and movement and some breath work just to get everybody into a nice place together to ground and that was what I did with the women was I was like okay let's all just like make take a deep breath and let out a happy sound and we got into this kind of like improv experience where we're all just making these pleasure-filled sounds and then like (laughs) everybody was ended up laughing and the women were making jokes how they needed to go home and have a little time with their men and I was like oh my gosh this is so amazing like this is so much fun and you you hear the birds doing it all the time when I swim with the dolphins they're just making love like in the pod of like hundreds of dolphin and you're like wow it's no big deal so (laughs) yeah we can all learn from that That's so beautiful. Mm. (laughs) This kind of leads me into just, I know you have this really big project you've been working on of um, Lakshmi lullabies and the songs that you've been putting out there and putting together and wanting to share with more people and getting more people to singing and using mantras. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that project. Yeah, um... So actually, when I was in Bali with you, Meredith, um, when you did your Rising Women Leaders Retreat, um, which stimulated my trip to Bali, that was why I was going there, was to be there with you on your retreat. And um, right before Bali, I was in India, and I had just completed a 200-hour mantra yoga teacher training with Anandra George um, in Rishikesh. And... I wrote in my journal on the full moon right before I left India. I'm so excited to record this mantra album of sacred songs. Um, I'm so curious how it's going to happen. And I didn't know any producers. I didn't know who the tabla player was that I've been dreaming of or the keyboard player that I'd been dreaming of. Um, or the flute player that I really wanted to also include in the music. And I got to Bali, and within a few days, I met all of these men who were ready to help me produce this, a couple of songs from my album. Um, and it was really interesting to me just how the Divine Masculine all of a sudden was like, here we are, Noelani, like, let's do this. And I was almost like nervous and afraid because of the reality of like how it all just came together. But in just a few days, I recorded um, two songs with full backup band and have two demos that are completely ready. They just need to be mastered. Um, And I just put down my own money for that. And I realized like, wow, this is a project that really wants to manifest right now. And, um, Lakshmi is the goddess of abundance, and she she is activating that ability, that uh, quality of abundance and prosperity and wealth that already lies within us. When we call to her, we activate it, and um, and it, I call it Lakshmi lullabies because um, these songs are kind of like like lullabies in a way that they create a very peaceful experience this blissful state of mind is created when the mantras are heard or sung and um so i started a an indiegogo crowdfunding campaign so that people can help support this dream of creating the album through pre-orders um i've put some of my jewelry as perks in the campaign as well and tickets to the launch party for the album a custom ukulele that was designed by my um ukulele creator um and so i'm really just calling in the abundance for people who want to support this project and want to hear this music in their lives and not only hear the music but i envision people singing along and activating their own voice um dancing along and just like creating this really healing resonance for people as they're hearing and singing the music um there's so much like music out there that like this you know the pop music that we hear it's all like these sappy love songs or like these songs about people hating on each other or like rap 
gangster stuff, you know, and it's got fun beats and, you know, some great chorus lines that are easy to repeat. But what I'm wanting and craving in my own life is conscious lyrics, conscious music that is really going to help me vibrate at a higher level, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's like, that's really what this, this album is about. It's all ancient chants. Um, Some are in Sanskrit, some are Kundalini chants and some are Hawaiian chants. Um, So that's what the album is going to be. And I've got the songs already are ready. They just need to be recorded and, and produced and put out there. So, um, I have about one month left in the campaign. Yay. I'm really excited to have my copy. So where can people find this? Um, people can go on to Indiegogo, um, Mm -hmm. and they, they can Google my name, Noelani Love or yeah, on Indiegogo, or they can type in Lakshmi Lullabies. Um, I also have some links to it on my own website, Mm -hmm. Um, Great. But yeah, um, it ends on September 3rd. That's the last day for people to donate. And we're seeking $20,000 to produce the entire album and to get the CDs produced as well and um, get distribution and everything created. So it's really a labor of like love. It's, it's a total passion project right now. And I'm feeling really supported by everyone's encouragement of for years. People have said, when are you going to record your mantra music? So, um, it's, it's finally happening and the universe is saying yes. And I'm saying yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just say that it was, so magical to watch you in Bali and saying yes so much to to so much in your life and meeting just the right people in just the right moments and I mean getting to be in that we were at this ecstatic dance and at the end like no Lani you when I first saw you you're like oh yeah I met the DJ he asked me to sing a song at the end I'm like of course you you know you you were just so like vibrating on the frequency of like I'm here to share I'm here to give and getting to see that all manifest so quickly was amazing and it's yeah it's clear that this wants to be birthed into the world now yeah that was so funny and then you introduced me to the flute player like right before <laughs> right before the ecstatic dance. I know you two had never spoken before and like we needed to get our friend into the dance somehow because it was sold out and you just were like yeah he's part of my band <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I said I was like hi I'm Noah Lottie. I'm on the list and this is my flute player <laughs> Like hoping it would work, hoping we could get Benja in. And then they were like, sure. And all of a sudden he was my flute player for the album. (laughs) Yeah. And it sounded like you guys had practiced together and everything. It was pretty magical. Those moments that can happen. Yeah. We must have been practicing like out in the ethers or higher selves. We're like, okay, we got to get this together so that these humans can listen to some music, some conscious healing, spiritual music. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. I want to bring this back around to the mamas and this in the the women who may be pregnant or have pl- planning to have children in their lives. Like what is your wish for them with the singing and the mantra album? Mm, I imagine so deeply like women singing to their pregnant bellies, just holding their hands on their pregnant bellies and singing mantras to these babies so that their mud so that the babies can like hear the beautiful sounds and feel the beautiful vibrations of the mother as they sing consciously to the babies. That's so powerful. Um, and then I imagine the mother's breastfeeding or, you know, feeding the babies and singing these songs to them and the baby's really like receiving these messages of love through the mantras um, and even putting the babies to sleep. My son, he's eight right now and he still loves putting him to sleep with mantra and um, we'll be riding bike, you know, on the bike path in our neighborhood and he'll start singing mantra and I'm just like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
I just, I really want women to awaken right now. And I feel like such a huge part of that is connected to the voice. And I feel like a huge part of that is connected to birth and our, not only the fifth chakra with our, our throat and our voice, but the second chakra where this experience of pleasure and creativity and passion is experienced. Mm. So like all of that is happening through the album. Mm. Yeah, and I can feel it. It's like the healing quality of, of the mantras and singing together and even just being in the pleasure of these sounds. Like it is creating a vibration and the more of us that come together to do this healing work, it's raising that consciousness for all of us and especially yeah, the the people having children and bringing that consciousness into them as well and to them. Mhm. Mhm. Mm Beautiful. Um, let's see. I just have one or two more questions for you. I Something I love to ask everyone on the show is just around facing their fears and overcoming them. And you have come so far in your life. I, I wonder, like, maybe in the last year, what is a fear that you face? How, how do you handle your fears when they do come up? What's that like? Ooh, that's funny you asked that question. I was just at a beach workout yesterday that my friend was teaching, and um, we were doing all these, like, hard sets of, like, plank pose and, like, dolphin pose with one leg up and all these, like, sets. And then when it would come, we in between each set, we'd have to run some laps. And I'd be like, all the other women would groan when it was time to run the laps. And I'd be like, yes, I love running. And I'm... And I was thinking about it. I'm like, why do I love running so much? And why is everybody else not like running? And I'm like, is this like a symbolic thing where like I just love to run away from things? So um, I've kind of been like sitting with that the last 24 hours of like, ooh, do, is that something that I, I do? Is that Am I running away from a lot of stuff? So um, trying to like become aware of when those fears do come up and how I am responding is a big thing right now. Um, particularly with my ex-husband and I won't I won't go too much into that but um really just like confronting what is happening and saying okay so how can we find the win-win-win for everyone in this situation like what is the fear what is the block that's like not allowing us to move through that fear and what what's the goal or what is the like best case scenario um and it, it can be a very, like, broad best-case scenario. So that's kind of the, the the work that I'm also doing on, like, a personal level. Of like, okay, well, what's the best-case scenario? I might not know all the details or the plan, but, like, maybe it's just a really broad statement. Like, okay, everyone's healthy and happy, and we're all peaceful and communicating nicely to each other. Like, if that's the best thing then let's just aim for that how that can happen and I might not know how that's going to be and that's the trickiest part because I'm a Virgo so I do love to like pick things apart and analyze and organize so just trying to like step away from step away from the painting get a bigger perspective and say okay yeah what's what's the real work that we have here does that make sense? Does that answer the mm -hmm. question? <laughs> yeah. Well, focusing on the end result, the end goal, like what am I really trying to create here? And then from there, I mean, in coaching, that's a lot how we work is thinking about, okay, this is what I want to create, where where I want to step towards, and then just thinking about the smallest possible step that will take you a little bit closer towards that. Um, mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. yeah do you have any well I'm curious I know that you're going back to Bali and going to be leading your own retreat and anything else you want to share about that or other things you're excited about in your business or life right now oh I'm so excited to be the women down to Bali for um a Shakti sisterhood retreat and you are a huge inspiration and um helping me to do this in my life when you led your retreat in Bali for the rising women leaders I just realized how powerful Bali is and what a great place to offer a retreat for women together in sisterhood so thank you for your inspiration in creating this um and it's 
uh, the Shakti Sisterhood retreat that I'll be offering in October. Um, we'll be focusing on the second chakra, which is our womb space, our creative space, and this place of pleasure and passion. And we'll also be activating our fifth chakra, our center for expression and truth, where the throat is. Um, so through the practices and the workshops that we'll be doing, we'll really be activating our own sense of passion and truth and creating or activating this ability to lead um, as women um, in our lives. So it's all about leadership as women and coming into this place of truthful expression and finding passion and pleasure as we lead. So I'm really excited to be going back to Bali and I'll also be um, completing my album production when I go down there in October. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And in September, I'm going to be launching my upcoming jewelry collection for Noalani Hawaii. And that will be our fall winter collection. So I've got tons of new materials that I'm excited to work with um, that are also going to be working with the second chakra and the fifth chakra and really just finding this leadership quality as women. So these um, pieces that I'm creating are kind of like talismans for um, this quality of divine feminine leadership. So I'm very excited to be sharing that in the fall. Um, yeah, so a lot of good stuff. And I think that as women, we're always creating, always birthing. And that's, that's what sustains us as women is to continue finding what is creatively driving us and to continue to express that. Beautiful. Yeah, and I'll include those links in the show notes so people can check them out. And such a good reminder just to always be creating and to see what makes us feel inspired and to go out and to share those gifts with each other. Um, do you have any last words of wisdom you'd like to share with anyone listening before we close this call? I would just love to invite all of you at some point today to find a sound that you can create in your body that is filled with pleasure and bliss and that activates your own healing resonance, resonance from within, um, whether it's in your car or whether you're in the shower or in the ocean or climbing up a mountain or making love wherever you can find the space and some time to just oh and feel so <laughs> good and so juicy ah. in your body yes 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 and just be a part of that feminine energy that is within you just experience that and let it out and see how good it feels so I just want to encourage all of you to do that. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Meredith, for this time with you. Mm. So grateful. Yeah, me too. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. So glad. I'm definitely going to be taking so many insights from your just your sharing and your voice and everything, your stories. So let's all come back together to tune into our heart to tune into our breath, our bodies, this moment, to fully take together any of those gems and wisdoms that you want to use in your voice in the world. And I bring my hands to my heart and gently bow. Thank you so much, Noalani. Thank you to all of you listening. Namaste. Namaste.